Young Scientists. Miss Bobby here. I'm back in the Sierra, and I wanted to tell you about an exciting adventure I had the other day. I went walking, and I went looking for single-celled organisms, and I want to show you what I found. It's so exciting. Before we get started, though, let's take a look and find out a little bit about single-celled organisms. We know that the plants and animals we can see are made up of cells. And there are many kinds of plants and animals we cannot see except under a microscope because they are so small. Some of these plants and animals are only one cell or one celled organisms and many of these single celled organisms live in water. We find these plants and animals floating in the plankton. The animals are part of the zooplankton, and the plants are part of the phytoplankton. Here are examples of two kinds of animals. On the left-hand side, a paramecium, and on the right, an amoeba. You can see first the picture of the paramecium, and then a drawing showing all of the amazing parts inside. Similarly, for the amoeba, you see the drawing on the right-hand side and the pictures on the left. These single-celled animals are smaller than the larvae of fish or jellyfish or mussels and sea urchins, which are all part of the zooplankton. Now, here's some pictures of green algae. On the left is Euglena. It has only one flagellum that helps it swim. And then in the middle and the right is Chlamydomonas. It's also green, and it has two flagella to help it swim. Now we're going to take a look at some pictures of some brown algae called diatoms. They're super cool because they're shaped like a box. They have a top and a bottom. What's also cool about them is that they're made out of glass. And so when they form sediments, you can always tell it was from diatoms. So these single-celled algae or plants are even smaller than the animals that eat them. These algae are called phytoplankton. We're almost ready to go out into the field and collect our samples. We have to look at one more diagram. On the left, you see an animal cell, and on the right, a plant cell. And mostly they look the same, except a plant cell has a cell wall, and animal cells don't. And the other wonderful thing that plants have are chloroplasts, because they can photosynthesize. So let's look for those when we try to find our wild creatures. These are my tools. I have a big glass container where I put my samples. I have a measuring tool, a ruler, that I'm going to be able to show you on close-up of the video. 
I have a small plastic container. And look at this. This is my pipette. Nothing fancy. It's just a straw that I cut off. And I have a pointer. And I have a tea strainer. But this one's a little bit large. I measured the holes in it. It might let my, most of my animals get through. But we're going to try using it anyway. This is my sample. I'm getting closer and closer, but the camera doesn't like it when I get too close. Things kind of go out of focus. So let me see if I can get something a little bit closer. See how big my pointer looks. That tells me it's going to be a little bit hard to see what these plants and animals look like, but we're going to try to figure it out. You see these really tiny threads? I'm going to put my pointer in. You can see these amazing threads. Let's see if we can get those under the microscope. Yes, we found a green alga called Clodophora, but it's not a single-celled organism. So we're going to have to keep looking. And did you notice this little animal right here? I happen to know that one is not a single-celled organism. It's really cool. It's called a copepod. We should be able to see some more copepods. I wonder how big it is. Here's a picture of a copepod from a microscope. You can see what interesting shape it has and why it kind of jumps along when it swims. Maybe we'll see some more of them in one of the other slides that we're looking at. Ooh, that's a cool looking animal, but it's still not a single celled animal. And again, we can tell because it's so big. Let's find out what it is. Sure enough, it's not a single celled organism. It's a dragonfly nymph, maybe from those gorgeous dragonflies we saw swimming around the pond. Well, we know that is not a single-celled organism because it's so big. So let's keep looking and see what we can find. Yep, sure enough, we found an amphipod, also not a single-celled organism but it is related to shrimp and other kinds of creatures. Looks pretty cool. What is that? It looks kind of like a worm. I know it's not a single-celled animal, though. It's a midge fly larva. Oh, a fascinating creature, but not a single-celled organism. We have to keep looking. Well, maybe we finally found a single-celled organism. Look, it looks like it's an amoeba. And swimming next to it, maybe a Chlamydomonas. And let's look around and see what else we can maybe see. Maybe we'll be able to see some diatoms. Well, we finally found them. We found three single-celled organisms. This amoeba was amazing. And we found several different kinds of diatoms. We know those are single-celled algae. And then we saw that Chlamydomonas swimming. So yay, we found our single-celled organisms. But I know there are many more in this pond. So I think I should take some more samples. I'm going to go back the next time, and I'm going to collect some more. And we'll see what we can find. 
own symbols. See you next time.